Hi, I'm Julian Bliss and I'm here to introduce you to this, the clarinet. A very popular wind instrument and, unsurprisingly, my favourite instrument. Now, the clarinet is normally made from wood and a particular type of wood called grenadilla, which is found normally in South Africa. But you can get clarinets made from all sorts of different materials, some plastics, synthetics, but this is about the best for a multitude of reasons. Like many other woodwind instruments, the clarinet is a cylindrical tube with a series of holes drilled into it, some covered by keys. And to play a higher note, you have less fingers down, and to play a lower note, you simply put your fingers down, and therefore making the tube longer. Sounds a bit like this. So that's the basics of what a clarinet is. The origins of the clarinet stretch back to the ancient Greeks and the Egyptians. But the most direct predecessor to this instrument is an instrument called the Shalamo. The Shalamo was a great instrument, however very limited in range. Could only play about an octave and a half. So in the 1700s, late 1600s, a gentleman called Johann Christoph Denner along with his son, set about modifying the clarinet to increase the range and the versatility of the instrument. They ended up uh, making it a little bit longer, adding on this part, the bell, and a couple of keys as well. What they ended up creating was uh, then known as the clarinet, but some people called it the mock trumpet. Interestingly, the name clarinet comes from clarino, which means small trumpet. The sound of the clarinet is produced by this, the reed. Now, this reed is made from cane, not bamboo, and it is clamped onto this part, which is called the mouthpiece, by this, the ligature. The idea is that when you play, the air vibrates the end of the reed, therefore making the sound. If you remove the mouthpiece, you can hear the sound that just the mouthpiece makes on its own. Not the nicest sound in the world. Anyway, so this is the mouthpiece. Then we move on to this part, the barrel. Now, this is the next part in line, but often used to help tune the instrument. By pulling it out, you make the instrument flatter, and by pushing it in, it goes sharper. Then we have the main body of the instrument, which is split into two parts. Now, normally, it is best to have these in one part in terms of acoustics, but we like to have a small case. So having these in two makes life a little bit easier. Then we move on to the bell of the instrument, the last part. And this really helps to get the sound out, project the sound, and shares a lot of similarities with the bell of some brass instruments. And there we have the parts of the clarinet. <laughs> Like I said before, the predecessor to the clarinet, the Shalamo, had a very limited range, but the clarinet has a very wide spectrum available, although you are limited in the lowest note possible. On the B-flat, the lowest note is an E. But the highest note is sort of unlimited, and in a lot of modern repertoire, composers push the boundaries of what is and should be possible. The highest note that is sort of acceptable is a high C, or concert B flat. But sometimes you can even play an octave above that. Is that a squeak? Is that a note? I'll let you decide. The clarinet I have with me here today is the B flat clarinet. Most of the repertoire out there is written for this instrument. But like I said, the clarinet family is quite extensive. The smallest is the A-flat clarinet, which is about this big and very high pitched. Then we have the E-flat clarinet, which you do see and hear quite a lot in the orchestra. Then there are others, the D, the C, the G clarinet, B-flat. And then as we go down the family or through the instruments, they start getting bigger and bigger. 
we have the alto clarinet, the basset clarinet, which Mozart wrote his famous clarinet concerto for. The bass, the contrabass, you get the idea. You might notice when you see an orchestra playing that the clarinetist often has at least two clarinets, and normally it's the B flat and the A. I will demonstrate the A clarinet to you in a second, but the reason they have both is sometimes the composer wants a slightly different sound, the increased range, and sometimes it just fits better in the hands and makes it a little bit easier for us. Now, the A clarinet is very similar in size to the B flat, only about an inch and a half, two inches longer, but the lowest note is a little bit lower. <laughs> So it, overall it is a very similar sound, although some people say it's generally slightly darker than the B-flat clarinet. One of the most famous pieces for the clarinet is written by a guy called Mozart. You might have heard of him. And it is the Clarinet Concerto. I'm going to give you a little excerpt, or play you a little excerpt from the second movement. A really lovely piece to play and one of my favourites as well. Now there have been many, many composers that have written incredible works for the instrument and these days a lot of composers are pushing those boundaries and increasing the amount of, of technical things and aspects that we have to deal with and we have to play. For example, playing two notes at the same time. Now normally that isn't possible. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. Sometimes you can sing into the instrument whilst playing another note, but you definitely don't want to hear me sing. But there are other ways you can actually get two notes from the instrument. This is a little bit quiet, um, but this is one of the nicest or nicer multiphonics. There are some others that, well, don't sound quite as nice. Thank <laughs> you. 